people, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, with Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Herb Rish. And today, again, I have a nice story for you. And this story is about Little Nell. And uh, it is story time. So, with that said, let us just get into our story. Several years ago, I was asked to preach to the convicts in the state prison in Michigan City. I sat on the platform while the prisoners marched in, 700 men, old and young. While they marched in lockstep, every man's hand on the shoulder of the man in front of them. At the word of command, they sat down. Among them, there were uh, 76 lifers men who had life sentences for murder. Well, after the singing, I stood up and I preached, but I could hardly speak through my tears. Disregarding all the rules of the prison, I left the platform and walked down the aisle among the men, taking one and then another by the hand and praying for them. At the end of the roll of lifers sat a man who uh, more than the others seemed hardened by his sins. His face was uh, stemmed with scars. He looked as though he might be a demon incarnate if arose to anger. It would be very violent. I placed my hand on his shoulders, and I cried and prayed with him and for him. When the service was over, the governor said to me, Well, Cain, do you know you have broken the rules of the prison by leaving the platform? Yes, governor, but I wanted to get close to those lovely men and pray for them and tell them, of the love of Jesus, the Savior. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19.10 This man, Jesus, receives sinners and eats with them. Luke 15.2 Do you remember, asked the governor, the man at the end of the line in that lifer's role is Tom Gelson, who sent was sent here eight years ago for murder. He was without doubt one of the most desperate and vicious characters uh, we had ever received. And as was expected, gave us a great deal of trouble. Well, about six years ago, I met somebody. I met Nellie. Let me tell you, Uh, duty compelled me to spend one night in the prison instead of at home, as I anticipated. You know, early in the morning, I left the prison for my home, my pockets full of presents for my little girl. It was bitterly cold morning, and I buttoned up my coat to protect myself from the cutting wind that swept from the lake. As I hurried along, I thought, well, I saw somebody hiding in the shadows of the prison wall. I stopped and looked a little more closely, and then I saw a little girl in a thin dress, her bare feet thrust into a pair of worn-out shoes. In her hand, she clasped tightly a small paper package, wondering who she was and why she was out so early in the morning, and yet too tired to be interested, I hurried on. Well, hearing somebody following, I stopped, turned around, and saw the same neglected little child. What do you want, I asked sharply. Are you the governor of the prison, sir? Yes, who are you? And why are you not at home? Please, sir, I have no home. Mama died two weeks ago, and she told me just before she died that Papa 
that is, Tom Gelson, was in prison. And she thought that maybe he would like to see his little girl. Now that mama's dead, please, can you let me in to see my papa? I want to give him a present. No, I replied guffly. You will have to wait until visitor's days. And I started on. Well, we all have compassions. And this part of the story kind of talks a little bit about our compassions. I had not gone many steps when I felt the pull on my coat and a pleading voice said, please, don't go. I stopped once more and looked into the thin, beseeching face before me. Big tears were in her eyes, while her chin quivered with emotions. Mister, she said, if your little girl was me, and your little girl's mama had died in the poorhouse, and her papa was in prison, and she had no place to go, and no one to love her. Don't you think he would like to see her papa? If your little girl came to me, if I was governor of the prison, and asked me to please let her see her papa, to give him a present, don't you? Don't you think I would say yes? By this time, a big lump was in my throat, and my eyes were swimming in tears. I asked, yes, my little girl, I think you would and you will see your papa. Taking her hand and hurrying back to the prison, thinking of my own uh, fair-haired little girl at home, arrived at by my office, I told her to come near the warm stove while I sent the guard to bring Tom Gelson from his cell. As soon as he came into the office, he saw his little girl, his face clouded with an anger frown, and in a guffy, savage tone, he snapped out, Nellie, what are you doing here? What do you want? Go back to your mother. Well, this was kind of heartbreaking. Please, Papa, sobbed the little girl. Mama's dead. She died two weeks ago in the poorhouse. And before she died, she told me to take care of little Jimmy because you loved him so and told me to tell you she loved you too. But Papa, her voice broke in sobs and tears. Jimmy died too last week. And now I am alone, Papa. And, and I thought maybe... As you love Jimmy, you would like a little present from him. Here she unrolled a little bundle she held in her hand until she came to a little package of tissue paper from which she took a little curl and put it in her father's hand, saying as she did so, I cut it from G uh, dear little Jimmy's head, Papa, just before they buried him. Well, Gelson by this time was sobbing like a child, and so was I. Stooping down, he picked up his little girl, presented her, uh, pressed her uh, to his breast while his big frame shook with supp suppressed emotions. You know, the scene was too... Uh, sacred for me to look upon, so I softly opened the door and left him alone. In about an hour I turned uh, and returned, and uh, Gelson sat near the stove with his little daughter on his knee. He looked at me sheepishly for a moment, and then he said, Governor, I haven't any money. Then suddenly stripping off his prison jacket, he said, don't let my little girl go out in the bitter cold day with that thin dress. Let me give her this coat. I'll work early and late. I'll do anything. I'll be a man. Please, Governor, let me cover her with this coat. 
Tears were streaming down the face of this hardened man. No, Galson, I said. Keep your coat. Your little girl won't suffer. I'll take her home with me, and she will see my wife and what my wife can do for her. God bless you, uh, sobbed Galson. Well, we now have a permanent change coming about. I took the girl to my house. She remained with us a number of years and became a true Christian by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's book shows man's need and God's remedy. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We see this in Romans 3.23. And now we know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. Tom Gelson also became a Christian. And then he gave the prison authorities no more trouble. Several years later, I visited the prison again. You know, the governor asked me, Kane, uh, would you like to see Tom G uh, Gelson, uh, whose story I told you a few years ago? Yes, I would, I answered. Well, the governor took me down a quiet street and stopped at a near home, knocked on the, on the door, the door was open, and a cheerful woman who greeted the governor cordially. We went in, and then the governor introduced me to Nellie and her father, who became of the governor's information, had received a pardon, and was now living an upright Christian life with his daughter, whose little gift had broken his hard heart. You know, it's amazing how the heart can soften from just an act of love. Well, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6, and he died for you. Won't you too trust him? Just like Tom Gelson did. When you were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5, 6. Well, I'm going to end my podcast here and uh, end it like I always do. God is out here. You can find him in your Bible. But these little stories point to the power of God's Word. If you want to know Christ, you got to meet him first. And you'll meet him and find him in your Bible. So open it up. With that said, I'm going to end my podcast.